Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of All The Mods 6. How are you guys doing today? How's life? What is the plan for today? Well, I was hoping that today we get into rats mod. I was going through the JI and I did notice that there are very interesting rat upgrades and I never knew they existed. For instance, you can get a bodyguard on top of a Ratlantian automaton and it's one of those things that you absolutely must have. But here's the deal. In this mod pack, we either have to go to Ratlantis in order to get all the parts or it seems that we can also hire an archaeologist. Both of them are going to require a chunky cheese token, which is not the easiest thing to get, but the archaeologist also requires a hat, which is a rare drop from husks or skeletons in jungles. So obviously, we need to find a jungle. Are you a jungle? Why is there a ghast? What's going on here? I had a feeling that it's not going to be that easy to find the skeletons in a jungle. Someone just shot me. Yes, as I was saying, I did bring my own spawner and I think this should work. How rare is it? I'm confused. Maybe we're going to have a better chances with a husk? I don't know. Yes, it's slightly damaged, but I think it's fine. Oh, this is new. We have found a blitz. Nice. I don't know if the damage matters or not, but we're gonna repair it anyways. So we have the hat, now we need the chunky cheese token. How do we get it? It's going to be slightly complicated because we either need to fight the black death or we need to find the pipers. You can also buy them from the plague doctors, but so far I did not see any of them selling it. But thankfully we can make a type of garbage which will help us to get pipers. It's slightly expensive on the wool. I think they only spawn in very dark areas. So I did make a night vision potion and we're going to put the garbage piles over here. And we run. We don't have to run. I'm just keeping an appropriate distance. Well, three pieces was not enough, so I made a little bit more and we're getting the pipers. And we're getting the mysterious tokens. But we need 81. Wow. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I'm being unlucky or not, but so far we only got three. 78 more to go. Actually, it seems that I was lucky the first three times because now they're not dropping it at all. At least they're dropping the wool, so I can make more garbage. I have literally made my own garbage production facility underground. It's been quite a while later and we have 81 tokens. And what that basically means is that we have the chunky cheese token. Oh, that was a challenge. <laughs> nice. And just to let you know, I have killed 150 pipers in order to get those 81 tokens. And of course, we're going to use it in order to make the rat upgrade archaeologist. Oh, and by the way, in this mod pack, you can make more marble cheese using cheese and quartz. But in any case, we need to start automating the production of cheese because uh, we're going to need a lot of cheese. So there is a curdling station and I think we have everything, yes. Eventually I have to get a little bit more organized with the animals, but I think for the moment, we can just put the cow over here and get milk. It's not the fastest thing in the world. You just cooked your rat. Now that I got the token, one of these guys showed up and he's selling them. I did purchase them anyway because eventually I'm going to make the portal as well so that we can go to Ratlantis. And this should be much faster, right? Good. I know that we can spawn rats, I know that we can breed rats, and I know we have a rat, but the thing is, I have a lot of rat spawn eggs because I think I killed 350 rats. <laughs> Anyhow, we need to make a new friend and he's going to be the archaeologist. Are we friends? Yes, I think we're friends. I just noticed that we have fire everywhere in the base, so maybe I just put you over here for now, and you sit. He's on my head again. And you guys have been telling me that I have to hold sneak and right click on the ground and I can put him down. I can't. I'm literally doing it. It's fine, we can make new friends. So, you stay here, here is your upgrade, and can you make me marble cheese? I think you can. Yes. So let us get down to business. We need the automaton upgrade. It requires arcane technology, which is basically a beacon. I'm going to give you six beacons and you're going to give me six arcane technologies. Then we need the Ratlantian automaton head, which is skeleton skulls. I have so many skulls. <laughs> Make me half a stack. Oh. Now we come to the Ratlantian automaton core, which requires a gem of Ratlantis, which requires rat glove petals, which I think we need 243 blue orchid. Honestly, it's not the worst thing in our lives because we have botania and we can convert flowers. So if we get roses, we will get peony, dandelion, poppies, and blue orchid. Oh, we don't need 240, we just need like 27 and that's it. Cause nine flowers will give you the petals and the petals will give you one gem. Okay, I might have overdone that. The only thing that we're missing is the ancient saw blade, which a Ratlantian automaton drops it. So obviously we need to fight the Ratlantian automaton. I did make an extra core and we're going to put the head and we're gonna run away. How much health do you have? Not much. That's good actually. And we got three saws. So by having the saw blade, we can make the upgrade. And we're going to promote our chef. Hello. 
you look nice. We are going to put you on hunt monsters. And I do have a mega torch somewhere around here. We should remove it. Technically, we can wait for the night, but I do have some zombie spawn eggs. So what will you do? Nothing. Move, dude. Okay, you need to specify a chest. Now will you hunt them? Are you brain dead? I have no idea what was wrong with this upgrade, but I also made the Ratinator upgrade. And that will give you like a cyborg. And he's really cool. Look. His aim is terrible. That's the only problem. His accuracy is much better if you put him on flat ground. I love this guy so much. He hunts down the monsters and then eats them. <laughs> nice. You are selling an axe which has efficiency 10. Okay. I think I had enough of rats mod for today and I was hoping that we can move on to something else. But before we do that, there is one more item that I want to get from the rats mod. There is a bow of Ratlantis. Fires stronger arrows twice as fast. And I really want it. This ingot that you see over here is basically an ore which spawns in Ratlantis. But thankfully, our archaeologists can make it. It's just a block of diamonds. We also need some spirit flames which is blaze rods. And just out of curiosity, how much damage do you do? Not much. <laughs> that took 4 hits. It needs a lot of enchantments. Anyhow, let us move on from the rats mod and get back to elemental craft. Actually, I think before we move on to elemental craft, we need to collect some of the containers. Yes, this is much better. Anyways, last episode we did manage to automate a few items and today we want to try and make the pure crystal which is used in transferring the nodes. And that is going to require a pure infuser. I was reading through the book and it seems in order to power this pure infuser, we're going to need 4 pedestals. Like this. And honestly speaking, making them is not going to be a complicated process. That should be the recipe, right? Oh, you consume a lot of air. Damn. Anyway, we have the air. This one is going to be for fire. You are going to be for earth. And you are for water. They don't know where to set it up, but I think for the moment we just put you over here. Oh, it actually tells you. This is earth. This is water. Obviously, this is fire. And this is air. Another important thing is that we have to provide them with elements. So this one is earth. We need to hook you up. I'm hoping I did not screw this up, but this is something that we have to automate later on because that's the thing that we need in order to make the pure rock. But for the moment, I just want one pure crystal. And that's it. Air crystal goes on air, water goes on water, fire, and earth. The animation is amazing. Really amazing. And it's eating through the elements. Wow. Okay. I was thinking, why do I hear a lot of drowns? And then I saw this. We just remove you and we should be fine. I have been here. That took a huge chunk of our elements, but it's okay. At least we have it and we can move the nodes. We're going to use that pure crystal in order to make an empty source receptacle. I'm also going to make it unbreakable. And can we pick you up? Yes. Nice. For the moment, we just put you on top, right? So that you will fill in the reservoirs. And did you know that unbreakable is not unbreakable? Aha. Uh -huh. So I have transferred all the nodes and all the containers that we have to this island, but there is a small issue. The extractors or garbage. And I'm very grateful that this mod is going to offer us an improved element extractor, which also requires a pure crystal. So we need four more, I think. And just out of curiosity, can I repair you? No. Oh, we can repair it. I have upgraded three of our extractors to the improved version, and now we just need one more for the aqua. So we put the diamond over here, and are you full? Yes. I love this animation, why does it stop? And the reason that it stopped is because it was not functioning. By mistake, I right click on this pipe and, uh, you know, I cut it off. And here is the final improved extractor. There you go. So there is something from Elemental Craft that I really want to try. It's called the Harvest Shrine. It's nothing too complicated and we can easily make it, but it also needs a growth shrine, which requires a shrine. And it has to be infused with water. Which one of you is water? Yes, this one. So shrine, water crystal, earth crystal, seed, bone meal and diamonds very good very good and the harvester itself needs earth so shrine earth crystal a hoe axe and shears so the question is how do you work <laughs> i mean i do understand how it's going to work we're going to need to feed it earth and then we need some crops oh you're going to drop it on the ground that's not very good. It's also not the fastest thing in the world. I should have probably mentioned what it is that I'm trying to get from Elemental Craft. The first part of Elemental Craft, which concerns the pure infuser, is not optional. Because we need the pure infuser in order to make the pure rock, and we need the pure rock in order to make creative essence, and we need the creative essence to make creative items. So basically, if we want to say that we have finished the mod pack, we need to automate this. So this part was not optional. What I wanted to get into Elemental Craft was because of two reasons. One of them was 
to use some of the shrines because I thought the mechanics are nice. And the other one is actually ore octopoling. But we will get into ore octopoling later on, let us focus on the harvester. Since the last update our botany pots are basically garbage because you cannot put supremium soil inside and you can also not use it in a garden cloche because garden cloches are extremely slow. I put one inferium seed inside the garden cloche and it has been more than one hour. And this is the result. That's it. So I was hoping that if we have a good harvester, I can make an actual farm over here. The harvesting shrine from Elemental Craft uproots the seeds, which is not very good. The harvester from Industrial Foregoing does the same, but the only one which does not is the harvester from Cyclic. And the reason that I was hesitant to use this is that I cannot adjust the range and it was just bugging me. But it's okay, we're just gonna hide it under a tree and we will never see it. And we're going to use this area for our mystical agriculture. So what methods do we have for accelerating plant growth? As you guys already know, thermal expansion has gone through an update and now we have access to something called phytosoil. It does not have a stupid recipe and it will accelerate the growth of plants above it. We just need to hoe the dirt and plant our seeds. There's also another machine called the phytosoil infuser which will increase the plant growth. So we have to put one of them maybe down here in the center. And this guy is going to require RF. And if we put radial enhancement inside, it's an augment, it will increase the range. Of course, another item that we can add is a lily pad of fertility. Still, it's not the best, right? <laughs> another item that we can use in order to accelerate the growth of plants is the growth shrine from elemental craft. But it requires element in order to function, which is perfectly fine by me. All we need is a little bit of piping, like so. Oh, it has a huge range. Nice. How do you make it go away? Go away. I'm guessing that is also a way. One more thing that we can try is the agricarnation from Botania. I also think a wise decision is that we convert them into the floating version. And of course, an agricarnation is going to require mana. So we put it maybe over here. That should be in range. Yeah, it's actually not working that bad. The question is how much water are you consuming? You are consuming a lot. We just take you and put you over here. Actually, to be honest with you, it's not a terrible solution. So far, it's been okay. We have 56 Inferium. We have more crops, that is true, but I think it's much faster than a Garden Cloche, which has been tweaked in this mod pack to be incredibly slow, and they're laggy anyways. Of course, I could have also used the Phytogenic Insulator in order to make the crops, but I'm not a fan. Um, I like to have a garden rather than a block. I went up ahead and cleaned up our little garden over here. It's not going to be anything too fancy because this is a kitchen sink mod pack and I'm not actually going to go that crazy. Anyway, I did also continue the path to down here and I made a small access room so that we can, you know, troubleshoot if anything goes wrong. In addition to inferium seeds, we also have fluix, certus, nether quartz and glowstone seeds because our quarry is not in the nether. Another thing that I should probably mention is that mystical agriculture has its own different tiers of farmland and the higher tier one that you use, the faster the crops will grow. And according to the wiki, the higher tier soil that you use gives you a higher chance of getting better drops from the crops. And that rhymed. So you might be asking to yourself, why the hell didn't you use Insanium farmland? Well, I just wanted to try Phyto Grow. That's it. And I thought over here at our greenhouse, we use the botany pots for, I don't know, some things like grass or ferns. And a very small progress update on the bees, I have upgraded the apiary to tier 4, and we're getting an insane amount of honeycombs. I mean, look at the number of nether stars that we have. We're getting so much honey and bee wax that I think we should start voiding them, because I don't need hundreds of thousands of them. We are now voiding the wax and the honey blocks, because we have thousands of them in our ME system, and if we want to make another apiary, we're not going to have any problems. Oh, and by the way, I'm also using our only blaze bee inside and he has given us like 10,000 blaze rods. Look how fast it is. I love this. Anyways, let us get back to elemental craft and try to automate the pure infuser. If we manage to do this, then we're actually done with elemental craft. I think the way that the pure infuser works is exactly the same as the empowerer from actually additions. So we are going to have an Xnet connector underneath each pedestal and then we just connect them. And that was not a cable. This is a cable. I'm going to put the Xnet controller over here so that it will have power. And I think what we're going to do is that we're going to have an interface on top and connect it to our ME system, like so. And for convenience purposes, we're going to put a chest over here, right? So that it will connect to the connector and we need to configure the interface. Yes, now it's pointing towards the chest. Very good. So this is how it's going to work. This is a pattern in order to make the pure crystal. What we're going to do is that we're going to make a channel for items and we're going to extract all the ingredients from the chest. And of course now we have to set filters so that the water crystal goes inside the water pedestal. Fire goes on fire, earth 
and air. The diamond goes in the center. Finally, when everything is completed, we want to extract the pure crystal and put it back inside the chest, which means I have to have an import boss on top of the chest and we need to specify that only import pure crystals. Okay, I have hooked up the pedestals to elements, we have the pattern inside the interface and I have removed all the crystals from our ME system. So let's order one and see what happens. It should craft the basic crystals and finally make the pure one. Okay, that's nice. That worked. And over here it's working too. <laughs> nice. The only problem that I have is that it's going to consume a lot of elements and this takes a fair bit of time in order to finish. You see, <laughs> it's eating the elements. Um, we need to bring these. Well, it did work. It's just that it looks terrible. Uh, we need to hide the cables. One more thing that we need to try from elemental craft is the focus and different spells. So for this, we're going to need a hardened handle, which does not have a stupid recipe. I think. Yeah, we just need this air silk and then one stick, white rock, air silk and earth crystal. Yes, we have it. It seems that the way that we can make different types of spells is that we're going to need a lot of crystals and then we put a scroll on the spell desk and right click with the crystals. We have the scroll of purification, which is not something that I wanted. According to the book, the scroll of purification removes all negative potion effects. Uh, we already have the charm, so this is basically useless for us, but it is perfectly fine. We can try one more time. We got ripening. That's good. Also, the way that you add the spells to the focus is through an anvil. <laughs> Having the spell on its own is not going to be enough. We also need an element holder. Oh, and by the way, I think I forgot to mention that I have covered this. We can fill in this element holder from the container. That is good. The spell of ripening should be like bone meal. So I'm guessing you can grow grass, right? Okay. Can you grow plants or no? It's not the best. I just managed to make a spell for fireball. Maybe that will be cool. So are you cool or no? Not the best. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm putting it out. I also made a fire cleave and I thought it's going to be fun, but that's it. It's fine by me. I was not expecting it to be something amazing anyways. There are better magic mods that we can play with. The episode by doing a few quality of life improvements. For instance, you might notice that I have installed a roof. The problem is we don't have a wall because I wanted to install some machines. So let's get them. One of the items that I wanted to automate over here was dirt. It's weird, I know. I don't want to go and vein mine dirt all the time. So what we're going to do is that we're going to make a metallurgic infuser and try to automate it. We also need a door very soon. The way that you make dirt in mechanism is that you need to infuse sand, with biomass. And biomass is essentially wheat inside a crusher. Actually, it can be any kind of plant, but I have a lot of wheat. So I'm using wheat. So I do have an export boss with a crafting card and we just need one biofuel. There you go. So you're going to be for extra on the left, right? Yes. So can we auto craft 1000 dirt? Yes, very good. If we infuse the dirt one more time, we're also going to get Podzol. And since I live in a taiga biome, I sometimes need Podzol for the ones which I'm breaking by accident. We can make dirt and we can make Podzol. And the main reason that I wanted to make dirt is that I can convert it into clay. Because generally speaking, I'm using a lot of bricks. And the way that you make clay in mechanism is that you're going to require a chemical injection chamber and inject dirt with steam. The reactor that we have over here generates a stupid amount of steam. So here is a chemical injection chamber. We give you the upgrades. We are going to have a quantum entangle porter attached to our reactor, which is set on channel steam. And then we just hook it up to our chemical injection chamber and we have steam. Nice. And just to make sure if it's working, can we make 100 clay? Yes. Perfect. One final machine that I'm going to add over here is a chemical infuser so that we can make gilded blackstone. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that the chemical injection chamber not only makes us clay, but also concrete. Also, I think it was two episodes ago that I said I need to find slimes and some of you guys suggested look in a swamp yes thank you i actually forgot oh we got a pearl nice we got four pearls but not a spawn egg that is weird i do have capturing on my sword so many slimes i'm so happy oh we also got two spawn eggs good We're going to make a hero's medallion because it stores experience does have a complicated recipe do i have a hat yes actually it wasn't the worst the mechanism side of the base is almost complete, except that one block over there. But I think now we should start focusing on thermal expansion. We did make a few machines, but we never managed to operate them. And I think before we start operating those machines, we should focus on the alloys from thermal expansion. You know, like bronze, invar, signalum, lumium, and indirium. We can craft all the alloys in an induction smelter, but I found another recipe which seems to be easier. There is a crafting recipe in order to make blends using dusts. And making dust is relatively easy because we have 
mechanism and we have nine slots to process all right guys i have set in all the patterns for the thermal expansion alloys and now we're making them super fast so for instance if i order 300 signalum ingots this is the speed that we're processing it which is really good yeah we already crafted like 100 of it because <laughs> basically this is the speed that we're processing everything also i have no idea how much experience i can store in my hero's medallion but it seems to be more than 100 because right now we are at 106 weird on the thermal expansion side i did not automate a lot of items the only items that i did automate was concrete and some of the gears because they had a cheaper recipe oh and by the way just to show you how everything works in the new thermal expansion this is the speed of the machine without any upgrades and in order to upgrade the machines instead of making upgrade kits now you need to make integral components this is a resonant one and it's super fast anyway guys i think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed it till the next one Bye-bye.